today's topic is the integrated elimination of strictly dominated strategies. I cover this in lesson 1.2 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. Check the video description for more information about that. So remember in the last video we looked at the prisoner's dilemma, and the solution to this game was for both players to confess. And the reason for that is confess strictly dominated keep quiet. Keep quiet was a strictly dominated strategy. It was never in the player's best interest to individually keep quiet. Confess always produced a better outcome than keep quiet. We saw that because, for example, with player one, if player two were to keep quiet, then player one should confess because zero is greater than negative one. And if player two were to confess, then player one would still want to confess because negative eight is better than negative twelve. Now, in most games, it's not going to be the case that one strategy is always better for each player. It's going to be the case that the other players might want to change their strategies based off of what the other guy is doing. And so if that's the case, then you can't just easily reach a solution where one player is always going to play confess and it doesn't matter what's going on in the other player's side. The other player is always going to also want to play confess because it's always in her best interest as well. That's usually not the case. And so how do we go about solving games when that's not the case? Well, here's an example of how we can do that. We're going to use something called iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies. This is a much more complicated game than what we saw in the prisoner's dilemma. Each player has three strategies. Player one has up, middle, down. Player two has left, center, right, and that leads to nine different outcomes. Now I want you to notice something about player one's strategies here. If player two were to go left, then player one's best strategy is to play up because 13 is greater than 4 or negative 1. But if player two were to play center, then player one should want to play middle because 3 is greater than 1 or 2. And if player three or player two were to play right, then player one would want to play down because 8 is better than 7 or 6. So Based off of what player two is doing, player one has a better or a different best response given what player two is doing. Player one is always wanting to change his strategy based off of what player two is going to do. And so, again, if we only looked at the prisoner's dilemma before and we didn't have any other tools to work with, we would be sort of screwed here because we wouldn't know what player one would want to do in this situation. However, we can get around this if we're really clever about how we go about solving this game. So instead of looking at player one, let's instead look at player two's strategies. For instance, let's start here. Would player two ever want to play right? And the answer is no, and that's because center strictly dominates right. Right is always worse for player two than center uh, for player two because center is always producing a greater payoff for her. Why is that? Well, this four is greater than this three if player one were to go up. If player one were to go middle, then three is greater than two. And if player one were to go down, eight is greater than negative one. So regardless of what player one does, player two should never want to play right because right is always worse than center. And so when player two is thinking about what to do in this game, she should just not think about right. She should essentially ignore it. And instead of thinking about this bigger game, she should just be thinking about the smaller game where she only has two strategies. Now, player one should be able to understand that player two is super smart and be able to respond to that accordingly. So if player one knows player two is super smart, then player one is going to infer that player two will never play right. And that has an interesting implication for him. So if player two is never going to play right, should player one ever play down? The answer is no. Why is that? Because middle now strictly dominates down. This four is greater than this negative one if player, one, uh, player two were to go left, and if player two were to go center, then this three is greater than this two. So regardless of whether player two plays left or center, the only two reasonable strategies for her, because right again is not reasonable, then that means player one should never want to play down, which means instead of looking at this game, we should really be looking at the smaller game. So based off of the fact that player two is super intelligent and wouldn't play right, and player one knows player two is super intelligent and wouldn't want to play right, that means he wouldn't want to play down. And then that means player two can now infer that player one would never play down, which means she can look at her strategies between left and center and decide that, well, I would never want to play left if I were player two. Why is that the case? Well, if player one were to play up, then center is better than left, four is greater than three. And if player one were to play middle, then center again is better than middle or center is better than left rather and so that's because three is greater than one and so this left strategy now no longer is sensible for player two it's only center which is sensible for her so that means we know that she's going to play center and if that's the case if player one knows that player two is super smart and won't play right and that causes him to play never play down which means she infers that he's never going to play down which means she's never going to play left and that just leaves us with her playing center that means this is just a simple optimization problem for player one, where now player one is left between choosing middle or up, and three is greater than one, so that means he's going to play middle and not up. And that leaves us with a solution here of middle center, and they're going to get 
three points apiece in this game. And the reason we did that, again, is because the players were inferring a lot about each other. They were inferring their intelligence, inferring that they wouldn't play particular strategies based off of that. And that allowed us to go through this cycle where we started out at right, eliminating right, and then eliminating down, and then eliminating left, and then eliminating up. And that eventually takes us to just middle and center. So we called this process Iterated Elimination of Strictly Dominated Strategies. That's why this IESDS is here. That's the abbreviation, Iterated Elimination of Strictly Dominated Strategies. That gets that name because we went through a bunch of strictly dominated strategies. First right was dominated, then down was strictly dominated, then left was strictly dominated, and then up was strictly dominated once we were eliminating these strategies. Hence the name Iterated Elimination of Strictly Dominated Strategies. Really a straightforward name there once you understand what we're doing. Now, going forward, if you ever see a strictly dominated strategy, you should eliminate it immediately. That means if you see any sort of game, whether it's a simpler game like a 2x2 two two game or a much larger game like a 3x3 three three game or even something like a 6x6 six six game, if you ever see a strictly dominated strategy, eliminate it immediately. Now, a couple of quick points about this. What do I mean by eliminate immediately? You know, you could be in a situation where you see multiple strategies that are strictly dominated at the same time, and as it turns out, the order doesn't matter here. So you might be wondering whether you should eliminate strategy number one first or strategy number two first, and as it turns out, it doesn't matter. If you eliminate either strategy, it's going to be the case that the other one is strictly dominated afterward. And so if IESDS is going to lead you to a single outcome, like it did in this game, a solution, if you will, where we know that the player is going to play middle center, it really doesn't matter if you eliminate one strategy first or the other strategy first, you'll still arrive at that one single outcome. And that's why iterate elimination of strictly dominated strategies is really, really useful. Now, unfortunately, again, most games will not be able to solve using iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies. Most games don't have dominated strategies like this. And so if we're in a situation like that, you might be wondering, well, how on earth are we going to solve that game? And we'll tackle that subject in the next video when we talk about the stag hunt and pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Join me in the next video.